Welcome to Economic Impact of uh, September 5th, 2023 edition. As usual, we have a lot of subject uh, to talk about today, but uh, what about uh, price performance on August? You were quite pessimistic, Stefan, at the last edition, and uh, it's worth, it was true. Yeah, well, last time we met, Denis, it was uh, a difficult start to the month. Uh, it didn't end so well, uh, and you notice that globally, uh, most stock indices, well, all of them were down, Denis. Uh, uh, the quarter is still up uh, year to date. Uh, we'll see how it That's ends. That's a positive note. <laughs> That's the positive <laughs> note. Uh, but clearly, there seems to be some impact mm-hmm. of uh, tighter monetary policy. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when you look at the trading discount and everything, you know, the uh, the uh, S&P 500 in Canada, how do they compare? So. We know the market's down in August, and you look at valuations, and they're still quite high. So the market is trading at, you know, 19 times forward earnings in the U.S. That's historically high, Denis. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the case for Canada. So clearly, some indices that have been pushed higher now have valuation issues, and I think the U.S. is part of that. And you have to, you all need to, t- you also need to take into account what's happened to interest rates when you do your trade-off between investing in the stock market versus the bond market. Can we say though that the, uh, you know, the the PE of the, the the Americans or the U.S. stocks are still very linked to technology, or it's widespread? You could argue that they have a greater uh, emphasis on technology. Their share still? is much higher yeah. still, but I would say it's been relatively widespread as of late. So I think P ratios are elevated throughout most sectors of the U.S. economy. Okay. Then uh, how about the uh, you know, uh, risk-reward perspective? Uh, well, that's the thing. So if you look at what's happening to, to, to uh, Treasury yields in the U.S. adjusted for inflation uh, above 2% for U.S. real interest rates, today, that's not nominal, that's real interest rates. And normally when you do your trade-off between investing in equities versus the stock uh, the, with the, versus the uh, uh, fixed income market, you look at the earnings yield uh, versus uh, real interest rates, and the gap between the two is is one of the lowest on on, on since two thousand three and over a generation. So the risk what reward, does it mean? well, the risk reward for investing in equities right now uh, is not as enticing as what we've seen in the past. So I think this is where you have to be careful in the cycle. Then are you saying that down the road we might see uh, equity market, you know, adjusting for that and. Uh Valuations are high. The risk reward is not as enticing. So you would think that you have to be a little bit more prudent unless you believe the economic outlook is set to improve. Okay. And how about that? <laughs> <laughs> you opened well, the door. <laughs> no, but the third quarter was relatively good for the U.S. And I, I get that. But, you know, and the consumer sector really helped the, propel the economy higher this summer. That but used to be true, though. Not anymore. Yeah, well... What's happening now is that households are spending out of their savings rate, which is not quite depleted, then you have, you know, at 4%, then that's, you know, half less, you know, 50% lower than what you saw prior to the pandemic. So 8% versus 4%. So clearly there's little room to spend out of your savings rate going forward. Okay, your chart is starting in 2015. If we go back then and you see 4%, does that mean that you know, we can see the economy slowing down faster? Oh, this is as low as what we saw after the great financial crisis. Wow. So it's okay. quite low by historical standards. Okay. Like we've, we've seen 2% in the US in the past, but you know, 4% is quite low given where we are right now. Okay, then the households are slowing down. How about the corporate? So I think there's an impact of higher interest rates on household spending. Uh, and for corporations, Denis, you know, with uh, interest rates at a multi-year high, uh, we've seen a significant increase in uh, bankruptcies, uh, corporate bankruptcies, since the start of the year. So over the first seven months of 2023, we're talking about 400 corporations that are listed or that are followed by the mm-hmm. um, S&P Global that have uh, gone bankrupt. Uh, we've seen this is as high as what we saw during the pandemic, right? 400 bankruptcies over seven months. Um, the issue, Denis, that I have is that in the past, when we've seen 400 bankruptcies, interest rates were at kind, s- kind of low, 0.25%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my view, Denis, is that unfortunately for the next few months, we're likely to see more bankruptcies as the impact of higher interest rates uh, makes its way to the, to the economy. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that even more in Canada because now we're sh- we're seeing, you know, a company or a very small company give it back the keys because they cannot reimburse the government with all the uh, the loan that they have uh, during the uh, pandemic. 
that may have. They are a small company, very small though, but yeah, those, we're seeing that they're You're absolutely there. right. The small companies, that's not the full universe of all no. companies. These are the you know, publicly listed mm-hmm. companies uh, or companies that issue corporate yeah. bonds. So again, this is, this is a, a trend that is not uh, necessarily uh, economy friendly for the next few months or labor market friendly. Yeah, and uh, we had the uh, last Friday, the uh, employment in the US. Uh, How's it going over there? Because this is a team that we kind of like here. Uh, what happened? <laughs> no, no, but it's important because if you talk about the, if you're if you're expecting a U.S. soft landing, a rebound in profitability, the you know labor markets have to hold up relatively well. So what we saw in the U.S. is that yes, full you know total jobs were up on the month, but but didn't there's more bankruptcies. Corporations mm-hmm. have to be prudent. Uh, they're managing their head counts differently. So what we saw in the U.S. for the month of August, total jobs were up. Uh, close to 200,000, but full-time employment were down half a million, more than half a million, and that's mm. a big number. So I think there's something happening in the U.S. economy that suggests that labor markets will weaken over the next few months. And, and if you want to bring inflation down, you have to cool uh, labor markets. And we'll see more this Friday with Canada. And we'll see, we'll see if what, how Canada yeah. reacts to, yeah, exactly. yes, this week, yes. So, how the uh, Canada economy goes? The well, GDP. higher interest rates are uh, taking a chunk out uh, the Canadian economy because we had a big surprise uh, mm-hmm. for the second quarter where uh, uh, real GDP, uh, economic activity was down. And that's, that's the second time in yeah. three quarters, Denise. So clearly there is an impact of higher interest rates that is uh, starting to uh, uh, surprise people. And the good news, mm-hmm. I think it, it will stop the Bank of Canada from hiking again. This Then you're making a prediction because tomorrow we have the Bank of Canada. I have to make a prediction all the time, Denis, but I think that uh, based on the uh, economic data, I think it would be mm-hmm. um, very aggressive for the Bank of Canada to hike interest rates uh, when you have uh, weak economic growth the way we have right now. Then we've been quite negative uh, today so far, you know, about uh, you know the uh, economic perspective, but we're seeing the uh, interest rate getting at a plateau if there's not anything. Yeah. Is this changing you know, your view about the uh, future interest rates? No, we've had, we've had a, a forecast where rate cuts would happen in uh, the second quarter of next year because you can't cut interest rates right now because mm-hmm. inflation is still quite sticky. Uh, but I think interest rates are coming, but that's a story for next year. And talking about price going up, commodities again? Yeah. Especially crude oil. Yeah. Well, crude oil is right. Mm. Yeah, it's on the rise, eighty dollars. Uh, I think there's a geopolitical component to that, mm. Denis. Uh, but at the same time, I, I just want to come back on what we've seen in the media over the past month, where yeah. Canada is depicted as a pariah uh, because of very large subsidies to the energy sector. Uh, there's an interesting study that just came up from the International Monetary Fund that actually demystifies the whole thing and saying, well, yes, and we have the smallest. Uh, the, the, the lowest energy subsidies in the G20. Mm. And, and what's troubling to me is our, 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 our trading partners, Mexico, uh, the US, are actually increasing their energy subsidies. So I think when we position Canada and the rest of the world versus energy subsidies, I think we don't have to be overly pessimistic on our energy sector. I think we've done a relatively good job in terms of managing um, the sector and- And, and making know, a transition too. It helps for the transition. Mm-hmm. So people are saying, well, Canada can't do the transition. We're spending too much on subsidies. Not the case. I think what the problem is, is with our trading partners. I think we, we, we can actually help the transition. Um, and I think Canada should show the rest of the world that this, the way we're doing it is not that bad. And that chart is not coming from you. Oh, it's not my calculations. <laughs> it's the International Monetary Fund. So I don't think they have a Canada ad- agenda there. Yeah, so it clearly, no. I think it, it's it's nice to have this international comparison. Yeah, put things in perspective here. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Stefan. Thank you for joining us t- today. And thank you, uh, all of you, to joining us. Hopefully, it's going to help you, uh, your investment strategy. Uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>